What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this uh, Sunday end of the weekend update video. July 10th, 2022 is the date, about 2.39 p.m. California time. I uh, got a 1.0 earthquake way up into the Alaska region. We are starting to see a little activity ramp up here along the Aleutian Trench and also areas down south here. Once again into the New Zealand area southward. Seeing quite a bit of movement today. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map. Uh, as far as the states go, we'll check them out here in a little bit. There's that movement up into the Aleutian Trench. Just within the last hour, we've had another 4.3 in this area. Somewhat deep here as well. Getting a little uh, deep earthquake movement along the trench area. Japan Trench and the Kurokamachaka Trench looks pretty quiet now. Did have a 4.5 earlier uh, this after earlier this morning, I should say. But since then, things are kind of on the quiet side around the Philippine plate today. Uh, Java Trench and areas to the east still seeing some scattered activity. Uh, as noted here in the Fiji Islands area, definitely seeing some uh, further deep movement. Still looking though. I'm still looking for that uh, larger scale activity. I think it's coming. Um, if not, it's probably just going to be a whole bunch of these fours and fives uh, in a short amount of time. We've seen over the last couple days here some deep movement around the Fiji Islands area with some adjustment west and also noted here in the New Zealand area some earthquake activity as well let's go ahead and check out the EMSC model here real quick stand by for a second while I pull it up because um, the USGS unfortunately doesn't show all the movement uh, on the uh, map as far as smaller earthquakes go so zoom it in over here to the New Zealand area uh, getting in on a few earthquakes here in this area. North Island seen a 3.2 earlier um, in the morning time. Also quite a few threes kicking up here on the west side around south area of New Zealand. Right, It looks like right on the plate boundary getting in on quite a few threes. That is some adjustment uh, being made in this area considering all the deeper earthquake activity. Got to remember deep earthquake activity does apply uh, not only regional pressure upstream into the subduction zone areas, but also as a whole, if you think about it, as far as the plate movement goes, getting a lot of areas down here to the south showing some uh, development. 4.6 and a 4.3 uh, in the southwestern edge of the Philippine plate, right around the Philippines there. A uh, little earthquake activity coming in on the map. I'm not noting it here on the USGS map. Uh, so let's see when that kicked in here 21 11 21 so this is basically here uh, within the last hour or two so I'm really surprised USGS not showing um, that activity a little on the odd side but uh, either way some movement kicking up for sure in that region of the Philippines South America looks pretty quiet right now. One earthquake here on the map, a little 4.5. We're checking these guys out here on the EMSC model. Most of the movement uh, looks to be a, well, there's a couple in there in the, in the four range. Of course, USGS seems like they only want to post one earthquake per 10 that actually take place. Um, hey, it's a weekend, right? They gotta, they gotta have an easy weekend. Maybe nobody's at the office. Who knows? But should have preliminary earthquake data systems, right? Should be apps and whatnot that uh, send out the info to the catalog, right? To the earthquake catalog, but it's not. Uh, so there's some fours and quite a few threes up and down the board here of South America. Pretty big increase in movement along the Peru Chile Trench uh, and also Puerto Rico area. Uh, that is one area that is, is being reported here uh, for earthquake activity. Seeing a little swarm. Look at this. Look at this activity. It's been a while since we've seen this type of swarm uh, near the Puerto Rico Trench. Of course, down here around the southwestern edge, it's very typical to see swarming. But more closer to the Puerto Rico Trench area itself, we're seeing that uh, cluster of earthquakes. Uh, looks to be like a 4.5 so far, the largest uh, in this area. 10 earthquakes. Uh, the majority of this looks like it was last night. Uh, but that is still a pretty good swarm of movement uh, into the Puerto Rico trench area. I gotta watch that pretty closely here because that can uh, that can pop off some trouble up here around the subduction zone. It's been a while since they've had a major rupture along the Puerto Rico trench area. 
uh, they can get some damaging earthquakes and uh, no doubt subsequent tsunamis in that area, which would probably, possibly, I think would affect the eastern part of the states there as well if you get a big enough jolt and a uh, wave displacement. And uh, of course, not to mention the damage that would be uh, uh, done throughout this area, not be good. States, what's going on out here? Uh, not a whole lot, so we're gonna kick up the all magnitudes map and um, see what we got here. A little bit of activity up into Washington. Uh, still seeing some activity around the Almanor, Lake Almanor area. This one kicking off uh, earlier, way early this morning, uh, right underneath the lake here. Been seeing a little swarm of activity around the Lake Almanor area. There is a fault system that does run through there. Very, uh, uh, si well, I was gonna say sensitive, but very thin crust up here. So possibly we could be looking at uh, um, some further movement. Uh, I'm gonna have to watch that pretty closely. We'll see what, see what it becomes. Um, let's see what else we got outside of Carson City, south of there, 1.2 and uh, some activity up and down the state here along the San Andreas Fault, Ridgecrest, and the Long Valley Super Volcano. No major swarms around here, just a couple small microquakes showing up uh, this morning. And within the last hour, getting a swarm of activity on the uh, eastern side here of the plate boundary. This is the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment, uh, where we've got uh, quite a bit of stress built up for at least an 8.1 magnitude earthquake. Uh, been over 300 years since this thing fully ruptured and uh, no doubt uh, that will be past tense one day uh, because it's coming but we're getting a little swarm of activity on the eastern side here uh, just about i don't know just a few miles or so uh, from the san andreas fault itself no major swarming going on around the salton sea at least southward here uh, aside from that little aside from that little activity up there so watching that zone rest of the country pretty scattered folks not a whole lot going on in terms of earthquake activity uh the big island out here in the beautiful pacific still seeing some activity around the mona loa area uh, the volcano up there showing uh quite a bit of microquakes here pretty deep though at about well four to five kilometers uh, in this region that could be uh, a telltale sign of some magma movement down below have to watch that pretty closely right now everything's still stable um, no updates on any changes and whatnot there at the volcano, but we're watching that pretty closely. Uh, aside from that, look at that, nothing going on across this area of the world. Uh, but then again, there is definitely uh, some movement. Let's go ahead and go over here to the west a little bit with the EMSC model. There's uh, quite a few twos and threes uh, throughout the Mediterranean area. This area is always, it's very similar to Puerto Rico or uh, South America. Uh, any areas that have a lot of uh, subduction zones and major plate boundaries here through this area. Always getting in on twos and threes, uh, but the USGS not showing anything above that. Uh, only 4.0 and above, if that. Uh, but looks like there was one over here today too. So USGS slacking, slacking quite a bit here. Java Trench showing some of that, some of that activity, but uh, things appear to be coming to a halt temporarily. That's kind of why we're seeing this back building here of the North American plate uh, uh, with the interaction of the Pacific plate here on the Eastern and the Northern side. Um, so we'll watch that pretty closely, folks. Uh, solar weather activity is getting a little crazy. Uh, we're looking at uh, a pretty large sunspot here. We can see it on this map. It's directly, almost directly facing Earth now. Uh, this one, look at that down there. Look at those beautiful features. Uh, there on the sun wow amazing loops and prominence uh, prominences and uh sunspot activity it's going to be getting pretty interesting here folks in the coming days um with these sunspots there is also a coronal hole 99 that's facing us so uh, not only do we have potential for some solar wind stream from this if these things decide to pop off any large flares with uh, subsequent CME or directed, uh, could be looking at a double whammy. And uh, that could be a good show for some of the states at the higher latitudes. Uh, looking at this map right now, 3053 is still growing pretty dramatically. 3055 is looking pretty uh, intermixing here as well with the colors, the different uh, magnetic fields and the poles, polarity. Uh, and behind here, there's another 
You can't really see it on these two, but over here on the latest one, you can see this one with the loops here. Um, that's that's another new sunspot, and it's looking pretty active. This one right here looks like it's kind of producing a flare right now. Um, so these two sunspots on the far eastern side of the limb. Let's see what we got here. The ones that are much further. Looks like uh, this development right here. And there's another one here that you can't really see, but it's a little bit further on the side. I remember those uh, those loops kind of stick off the surface of the earth or, or the uh, the earth. Hopefully not the earth, the sun, and uh, makes it visible on certain images, but not on this one. But this one here is going to be named uh, probably pretty soon. It is rapidly growing. I'm sure that will be named uh, by tonight, if not first thing tomorrow morning. Solar flare activity is popping. Uh, and crackling here with a bunch of sea flares. Uh, and that's probably coming from some of those sunspots that I just showed you there on the far eastern limb. Uh, but don't discredit the 3053 and the 3055 uh, sunspots. These things are ginormous and they're huge. And they're getting a little intertangled mixing going on there with the, the, uh, the flare process. Probability details right now still name 3055 and 3053 for the most likely uh, of producing any type of flaring. There is a 50% chance of an M-flare and a uh, C-flare, almost certain, almost certainty, right? And 95%, uh, X-flare around 10%. Uh, I gotta remember, considering we're popping and crackling here uh, with consistent C-flares, and that's normally a good sign of something about ready to go boom uh, on the sun. Not literally, but uh, could produce a, a pretty large M-flare and you can't uh, definitely can't count out an X flare from one of those sunspots, uh, so things are definitely getting pretty, pretty, um, pretty busy on the sun. Let's see what else we got here right now. KP index is down there around the uh, very low side. Not a whole lot of probability for the auroras, and uh, I'm sure that will change. Uh, aside from that, folks, uh, let's check Yellowstone real quick. I always like to jump on see if we got any swarming going on. There is some earthquake activity here. Uh, looks like around the Maple Creek region, seeing some of that. I'm not for sure what this activity is. It looks like a loss of data intermittently um, showing up there on that station. Let me see here. Holmes Hill showing the same thing. That's a little on the odd side. That's probably, probably got to be some type of uh, network error. Um, because if it was activity, say if it was activity in the ground or underground or the wind, um, it wouldn't lack data. It wouldn't cut out in data. And it's almost like every couple minutes here, every minute or two, it's consistent with the um, with each other. So something going on over there with uh, some technical errors, it looks like. Even on that station, that's kind of crazy. Um, 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 let's see here. On this one too? Not on this one. Yeah, a little odd, but uh, definitely I've seen some earthquake activity out there. It's shown up over here on the Horse Butte station as well. It's going to be this one, uh, maybe a couple of these other ones. No major quakes currently. Otherwise, that would be showing up all across the park. Uh, even a two-pointer will definitely show up across the park pretty, pretty uh, easily. So these are all uh, somewhat uh, small earthquakes. Pitch, Pitchstone Plateau, uh, seeing some of that earthquake activity as well. But gosh darn it, I don't know what that is. That's weird. Looks like it just cut out, and um, it's just, it's really strange, folks, what that is. But it's consistent. See that? It's its uh, definitely some network error, it looks like, popping up there. But uh, we'll see if they get that fixed or not. Uh, anyway, folks, I'm going to jump out of here. It's 107 degrees here right now. Um, and I'm trying to keep everything cool. I got multiple air conditioners running and uh, 70 degrees inside the house. So 70 here in the computer room. I got to keep it cool. Got to keep this equipment and stuff running uh, nice and cool. But man, is it hot outside. It's, uh, it's supposed to be 100 and I think 107, but uh, we, we might peak a little above that. Tomorrow, 110 at least. Um, and we got humidity around the low 20s, so it's dry, but it's not super dry. Um, if it was in the teens or the single digits, it would definitely be a lot better, I think, in my book. But uh, 
there's still just a little bit of humidity out there. I know nothing like the like the southern states or the plains. You know, we get the humidity in the 30 and 40s with a 100 degree temperature, but it's hot. 107 is just hot regardless how you look at it. Uh, and then tomorrow is just going to be brutal, 110 or so. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to melt. Going to melt. I may jump out here in the pool in a little bit just to try and cool off. I mean, it's cool inside, but I don't want to stay cooped up all day. So I'm going to go jump in the pool and maybe work on the suntan a little bit. Who knows? Either way, folks, uh, enjoy the day. We will be back a little bit later on this uh, this evening with an update. Uh, unless anything major happens, till then, we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Some earthquake activity happened off the uh, coast of uh, California as well. We didn't cover 2.5 uh, out there into the... Uh, looks like the... It kind of looks like the... Uh, when did this one come in? 2.5 up in the Wyoming area. That's a little on the odd side. Pretty recent as well. Um, I'm not for sure if that's the EMSC model reporting that or the USGS. Uh, I believe it might be the USGS. Uh, yeah, 2.5 near the Hebgen Lake Estates area. Pretty deep though, at about 12 kilometers. All right, folks, I'm gonna bounce out of here. Have a good day, stay safe, stay cool if you can. And uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later on tonight. Peace out everyone.